Praise the Lord. This is Brother Contrell. Just happy to be with you again. Today we're going to be talking about the account where Jesus healed the lady with the issue of blood. Amen. I love this story. This is one of my favorite stories. Um, I had the opportunity to share this before. Amen. Um, I hope that you can get something out of it as we get into God's word and break it down. We're going to go to the Lord really quick in prayer and then we'll get right into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you. We thank you. We praise you, Father God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We thank you for the covenant that we have with you, Father God, in, uh, in Christ Jesus, that blood covenant that there's healing. There's so much provision because of what your son has done. So we give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to get into the word. We're going to be looking at Luke. This is in chapter 8, verse 43. Now it says this. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. So this lady is two things we see right off the bat. She had this condition, this condition, excuse me, for 12 years. For 12 years, she had this condition, all right? And something else, we see how many of you guys ever had doctor bills? Imagine that if you spent all your, your livelihood, all the money you had, she spent on doctors. And I believe it was just to the point, not that they were using her, but they were just taking her money. You know, her money was being took and, and she got worse. I mean, have you ever been in a situation to where you tried everything naturally? That's the key word. You tried everything naturally and things just got worse. You know, for some reason, I want to say this as, as believers, um, there's many ways to get healed. You know, we talked about some of them. Amen. We said one reason that God will heal you is because he loves you. Uh, another way we can get healed is through the laying on of hands. Another way we can get healed is through confessing his word. Um, I went through a sickness. I'll tell you a little something. I, I was sick a while ago and the symptoms was I couldn't breathe. Uh, my wife came and she laid hands on me. And when she laid hands on me, Honestly, the healing power of God flowed through my body and I was able to breathe. But then this, this same thing happened again. And I remember laying on my bed, right? And I just started saying the name of Jesus. I didn't get into a panic attack. I didn't get into a place of just like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I'm dying. Nope. I just started confessing the name of Jesus. There was power in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. That was two ways I got healed, you know, because the symptoms came back, right? Um, my wife laid hands on me. You know, and it left and then it tried to come back. We talked about how the devil comes back for a more opportune time. And I just laid there and I just started saying the name of Jesus. So we thank you that there's healing in the name of Jesus. There's so much power and provision just just wrapped up in his name. Amen. So we're going to go to verse, but we're talking about this. We're going to go to verse 44. It says um, in verse 44, it says uh, came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped. OK, so I want to just share something with you. We read this. This is actually me and my wife was talking about this, how this account is in three different places. It's in Matthew, Mark and Luke. When you read this account in the book of Matthew, you see something a little different. I'm going to read it. Um, I'm going to read uh, Matthew 9 and 22. And this is talk. It says, but G it says in verse 20, and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touch the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, okay, I love this part. Pay attention to this. She said to herself, if only I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. So this was this lady's meditation. This is what she thought in herself. You know what I mean? And I thought about how our imagination can play a part in healing. Glory to God. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I mean, you got to see yourself healed. So if you can just see her. Now, some people said that she might have been imagining or meditating on this for a while. Some people say it was when Jesus came at that moment. Oh, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment. But that was something she said within herself. And she, it, that was, that was, she understood that if she came in contact with Jesus, she would come in contact with the healing power of God. Amen. Now, let's look at this back in, in Luke chapter um, 9 in verse number, da, 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 da. let's look at 45. And Jesus said, who touched me? Now, you got to understand something. There was a lot of people around. If you can imagine, sometimes we know Jesus, he fed thousands of people, right? 
um, maybe sometimes it was just a procession of, of hundreds of people, but there was a big crowd around him. And Jesus said, who touched me? Right? So there was a lot of people bumping up against him, right? But what was different about her touch? What was, I heard one minister say that her touch was a faith touch, but we're getting there. I don't want to get ahead of myself. When all denied it, so people, they denied that they touched, that, uh, that they touched Jesus. Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitude throng and press you. And you say, who touched me? They like, Jesus, there's a lot of people around you. And you're talking about who touched you? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. Amen. I heard one minister say that, that, that she, in her releasing in faith, she came in contact with, with, with the healing endowment, with that healing anointing. Amen. She touched his garment. Glory to God. But when she touched him, it wasn't, again, it wasn't just a regular touch. It was a touch of faith. And I want to say this. You might be going through sickness. You might be going through disease. You might be going through things in your body, right? But again, this all comes down to faith. If you can, if you can release your faith, glory to God, that you can come in contact with the power of God. You don't necessarily need anybody to lay hands on you. Hallelujah. I'll tell you another story about healing. I remember I had um, a toothache. It was really bad. It was so bad, I wish you would have shot me in my foot. Because if you would have shot me in the foot, I wouldn't have felt the pain that was in my mouth. And my mom, God bless her heart, she was like, you know what? I'm going to get some sleep. So she gave me some kind of pain medicine. I'm not going to lie. It put me straight to sleep. But I woke up and I had the same pain. And I remember something that a minister said. He said, sometime our prayer... Um, our, 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 our prayer has to equal our praise, or was it the other way around? And our praise has to equal our prayer. There we go. Our praise has to equal our prayer, right? So I remember I cut on some worship, and I start praising God. And we're just talking about the different ways that God can heal right now. And I start thanking him, and my God, I tell you what, I came in contact with the healing power of God, and the toothache left. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, there's different ways that he healed. But in this instant, it came by this lady releasing her faith and touching the hem of his garment. Amen. Let's let's go on and let's read a little bit further. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. So she gave her story. And what happened was because of this lady's faith, hallelujah, that story turned to a testimony. You may have a story that you're telling and it's not a good story. You're talking about everything you're going through and this and that. But when you add faith to that, the story changes. Glory to God. I hear some, some, um, some ministers say God's going to change your story. And I tell you that God can change your story when you have faith. You can, be, you can have, you know... Um, ear problems. You can have, you know, I don't care if, if you're blind. Jesus can heal the blind. I mean, the Bible says it. I, I said this through a lot of the lessons. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we need, but the missing ingredients is faith. And she said within herself, it makes me think, I'm going to break down that third John in two, since we were talking about her meditating in herself or, or her thinking in herself. Another word for meditation I wrote is to think deeply or carefully about something. And, and I like to think that meditation is like a focused thought. You know, that she had a focused thought. And 3 John 2 says this, But love, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. And your soul is your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. So before you have it manifest in this natural realm, a lot of times it's a thought. Glory to God. And what she had is a thought. Now, what I want you to do, for those you might be going through things in your body, I want you to think about that, that body part that, that's aching or that ailment and say, I'm going to bring it to the feet of Jesus. I'm going to bring it to Jesus, and I'm going to release my faith that the healing power of God, hallelujah, will change my circumstances. Because if I backed up and, and if I read, um, it talked about how, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. So she came in contact with the healing power of God and immediately it stopped. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God that we serve a God of, of, of immediately. We serve a God, glory to God, that will do it. But remember I said, even if you don't have it happen immediately, remember your faith stands in the, in, in the gap, right? It stands in the place and you know you have your healing. And you hold fast again to your confession of faith because your healing will manifest. I hope you like this simple teaching. 
I love you guys and God bless you. Have a good, have a good day. Amen.